Good evening, everyone. How are we doing? Good, I hope so. Why don't we stand and we'll get started. Tonight, we're going to be doing our, our night in the worship, night of worship, so we hope that you'll join in. And sometimes, you know, when we're bummed out, we have a tendency to say, well, I'm not going to pray. I'm not going to worship. I'm just going to sit here. I was going to Calvary Chapel of Victorville and uh, unceremoniously was a uh, situation happened and I wasn't there no more. So, of course, you go to church on Sunday and that's what me and Sherry did. We went to a different church. For three weeks, we went to this different church. And during worship, I'd just sit there. Worshiping, everybody would be worshiping and I'd just sit there. And it was on the third week, about halfway through the worship set, when the Holy Spirit just nailed me. And I, I started weeping and I started worshiping the Lord. So if you're in that boat, you're having a hard time, don't, let the, don't wait till the Lord breaks you down. Just worship. Worship from your heart. That's what this evening is about. To worship, to adore Him, to honor Him. We, we're going to ask for His presence here. It says in Matthew, it says where two or three are gathered together in my name. He's here with us. How many, how many love Jesus as their Savior? Okay, we have more than two or three, so he's here with us right now, his presence. So let's pray and we'll get started. Lord, thank you for this beautiful day and for all that you do in each one of our hearts. Help us to trust you, to love you, to walk after you, and to honor you because you are deserving of everything we have. Our very best is the least that you deserve, your due. So, Lord, thank you for your great love. Minister to us and help us to serve you and seek you in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. All right, cool.
guys be seated if you'd like to. Playing drums as our guest is Mr. Bob Mirabella.
so God resurrect these bones the death to life for you alone Awake my soul Awake, awake, awake my soul God resurrect these bones the death to life for you alone Awake my soul Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my ways. And let there be you, Lord, in my heart, knowing me and trying me and searching me, Lord. Thank you for your great love. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my ways. See if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing. Of the goodness of God And all my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire and in darkest night you are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend And I have lived In the goodness of God Cause all my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so the goodness of God. As your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you This is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you 
everything. Your goodness is running, it keeps it's running after me. And all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God Cause all my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God I will sing of the goodness of God Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Good evening, Calvary Chapel. Everybody good? Yes. Highly favored, amen. Love it, love it. Our midweek feeding, right? Go back and out there and finish the week strong. Amen. All right, hey, uh, just a reminder, a few announcements. Um, Agape Way is uh, the second and fourth Friday. So that would be the 14th and 28th of this month. 7 p.m. here in the sanctuary, hosted by our brother Danny. Amen. So if you're uh, available for that, and he always puts on a good little get-together, so you know, amen to you, brother. Prayer at Harupa Valley Sheriff Station, Thursdays, 9 to 9.30 by the flagpole. So if you are available to get out there and pray for those brave souls, we appreciate it, and they do as well. Women of Integrity, once a month DVD series, third Thursday of each month. So that will make it July 20th of this month, 6.30 to 8.30 here in the sanctuary. So you uh, ladies, if you're available, come get fed. Amen. Blessed and be blessed food ministry, third Friday of each month. So that would make it July 21st of this month. And as a reminder, in the bulletins, there's a phone number to please call to get yourself an appointment and allow things to flow a lot better and uh, get blessed by the Lord with some, with some food. Amen. Prayer meeting, July 22nd, 9 a.m. here in the sanctuary. So anybody available to come and, and pray? You know, we just get together and pray for our city, our loved ones, our country, just whatever's in your heart, right? And as Sam said, you know, two or more are together. He's with us. Amen. Grease Share Barbecue coming up, August 26th. Amen. Right over here at uh, Agate Park. Uh, that is uh, 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. It's, again, worship, fellowship. Excuse me, Gary. I mean, when you think of a barbecue, don't you think of, like, gun smoke or bonanza? Or, I mean, really? You know? Never mind. Well, howdy, folks. <laughs> gun smoke, wow. That just shows how old he is. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> hey, it's actually a good show. <laughs> Amen. All right, so grief share, yeah? <laughs> August 26th. It's going to be a lot of fun. Worship, fellowship, food, games, uh, you know, just all kinds of good fun. And even maybe a little gun smoke. <laughs> Let us pray, shall we? <laughs> oh, dear gracious Father, we are so thankful to be here, dear Lord be in your house and enjoy ourselves dear lord as you would want us to dear lord oh but not lose focus in you dear lord oh just give you the glory as you deserve dear lord you are our lord our god oh we are just so thankful for you dear lord we just ask that you would bless this worship team as they 
take us through this evening with some really good, fun worship, and just let the Holy Spirit fill us, dear Lord. We thank you here at Calvary Chapel, Rupa Valley. Oh, we just love you, dear Lord. And all God's children say, Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen.
so we pour out our praise, pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise to you only, great are you Lord, great great you are magnificent lord you keep us and you walk with us always and we praise you and we thank you we love you lord god almighty thank you for loving us and keeping us there's none like you Jesus, you're all 
Praise the Lord. You guys sound great. It's awesome to worship the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, do your work this evening and touch hearts. Touch us and help us to fall in love with you like we should. And we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. As we're getting ready to come to the communion table, I think we need to remember something about the communion table. That it's exceptionally a holy thing that we do. And, you know, I remember being in the junior high ministry all those years ago, and we'd be doing communion, and we'd, we'd really tell the kids, you know, hey, this, this is not something that you mess around with, yet, you know, we'd be doing it, and we'd see people taking glasses, you know, like they're toasting each other, and, you know, I mean, they're young kids, and they didn't really know, but we're trying to teach these guys before they go into high school. And in those days, I think it's still the same way. The junior higher was the last place you went before you went into the main sanctuary. So I guarantee you, you wouldn't be doing that in the main sanctuary. So we were always trying to teach these kids. When I first became a worship leader at, at the junior high level, it was crazy because this guy, this guy had the band, he had a full on band and we'd play three times a month in the junior high, three services, and it was pretty cool. And then one day he tells me, after about doing this for about six months, he tells me, he goes, hey, um, <laughs> I'm going to leave, so the band is yours. And I said, oh. he just tells me this. You know, I said, okay. So then that ser the first, second, third service, it was, there was six of us. The following week, there were three of us. The following week, there was me. And that was cool. It was really cool because it allowed me to teach these kids how to worship because the, up to this point, the worship leaders, this is, this is 30 years ago, the worship leaders were teaching the kids like the, the nursery kids stuff, you know, where they jump up and down and clapping their hands. I mean, there's nothing wrong with clapping hands, but, you know, they're like, a lot of these kids are like a couple of months, three, four months away from going into the main sanctuary, and you wouldn't be doing that. So the Lord had put it in my heart to teach these kids how to worship, and it was so cool. When we'd be at the camp, and I'd be at the campfire, and I'd be worshiping with the acoustic guitar, just me, with these, all these 300 kids, and those little girls, those high-pitched voices would come back at me. It caused the hair on my arm to stand up. It was so awesome. But the other thing that we taught these kids was the fact that there needed to be a holiness and a reverence when it comes to taking communion. Now, I'm not talking about perfection because none of us are there. I know the Bible also says, it says where Jesus, uh, you know, not Jesus, but Paul said, you know, be perfect, you know, be, be, you know, you need to be perfect. That doesn't mean you have to act perfect. It means that you're maturing in the faith. You're growing in your faith. What do I mean by that? It means reading the word of God, knowing the word of God absolutely knowing the Word of God. I can't emphasize that enough. As a believer, if we don't read the Word of God, it's, it's, we, we're not going to do very good. And in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, which talks about the communion table, Paul was in, uh, very cool about this, but he also talked about after the bread and the wine that you know the for us it's the the little cracker and the juice which represents the broken body of Jesus and the spilled blood of Jesus so right off the bat we're talking about God's broken body 
and his spilled blood. This is holy. This is very holy. You know, this isn't like, okay, let's hurry up and get this done. I got, I got, I got to eat dinner. I need a late dinner. You know? No, man, it, you, this is something that you just totally grab onto and you say, this is between you and the Lord. And Paul talked about, in verse 27 of chapter 11 of 1 Corinthians, it says, Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the, blood, the body and the blood of, of the Lord. And it says in 20, verse 28, Let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who drinks, eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. And what that simply means is if you're not walking the way you should, I'm not talking about you, you stumble and fall. All of us stumble and fall every day. I'm talking about if you're playing games with God. Please don't take communion. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, please don't take communion because it's, you're drinking judgment upon yourself. That's what the Bible teaches. But the cool thing about when I used to go to uh, another church years and years ago, this is when I first became a believer. They would say, the pastor would get up very sanctimoniously and very righteous, which I thought was pretty cool. He'd say, okay, if you don't know Jesus, do not take communion. Okay, let's take communion. And then he'd you know, go into it. But I remember going to another church years later that they said, okay, if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, do not take communion. He goes, but then he goes, so how many of you want to ask Jesus Christ to be your Savior, to come to know him and live for him? And people would raise their hands, and it was how cool the first act of becoming born again is taking communion with our Lord. This is very holy. It's a time when you you want to focus. You want to focus. It's a time when God will talk to you. He will talk to you. He will let you know if you're doing something that you shouldn't be doing. You know, if you're, you know, hanging out with the boys and smoking a joint or hanging out and drinking a six-pack with the guys, this probably isn't the place to, to try the communion table. And the reason being is just because you don't want to drink judgment. We just read that. So this isn't me. Say, this isn't Sam. Who am I? I'm a nobody. You shouldn't do it. The Bible's very clear about that. Now again, I'm not talking about the person who's had a bad day. Maybe said some words you shouldn't have or had a lousy attitude. Man, that's, you're talking about my day right there, you know? Every day. You know? I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about somebody who leaves out of here Sunday or Wednesday night, and you have no intentions of, of walking in what Pastor Greg shared with us, or the songs that we sing with, with worship. I'm not talking about that. Those, like I said, all of us have those days. Amen? You guys know what I'm talking about, right? We all fail. But that's, I'm not, again, I'm not talking about the guy that the weekend that's coming, oh, Friday night, Saturday night, oh, oh yeah. I can hardly wait to dig in, you know. I'm going to go find it. You know, you already know. You know what I'm talking about. Rascals. That don't have any intentions of walking with the Lord. And then on Sunday morning we have communion and you're right there. Oh, yeah, yeah well, praise the Lord. You know, no, 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 no. Don't. Don't do it. You know, man, the problem this, with this is that we have grace. The, God's grace is awesome. And it, it covers a multitude of sin. That's why Jesus came. But it doesn't cover the sin of somebody that's just playing games. Like I said, this is not child's play. This is called growing up in the Lord. Let him come into your heart. And let him change you. If you're having a hard time hanging out with the boys, guess what? You need to change who you hang out with. Girls, same thing with you. If you're having a hard time hanging out with the girls because, you know, you want to party and you want to be a part of the group, you know? No. 
That's not okay. We have to get serious about walking with Jesus. And when it comes time to the communion table, we're talking, it doesn't really get too much serious than this, more serious than this. I'm not trying to blow anybody's mind, and I'm not mad at anybody. But guys, there has to come a point where you realize, you know what, I'm not walking with the Lord like I should. I'm not reading the word. We have too many things that are being attributed to God that definitely aren't of God. Because, why do we do this? Because we don't know what the Bible says. The Bible talks about holiness. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 16 talks about holiness. What is holiness? It's trying to live like Jesus wants us to. It's trying to read the word every day. If you miss a day, you're not going to go to hell. But you're trying to word, read the word. You're trying to change. You're trying to learn about what God wants for us. When you pray, you're talking to God. He's listening. The great thing about God is he meets us where we're at. How many times have we been down and ready to throw it in and, and either somebody, yes, somebody comes and they talk to you, they call you, or you turn on the radio and that song comes on that ministers to your heart, and it happens. It happens all the time. God is a God that loves you, me, and he wants to have a personal relationship. I mean, when I'm talking personal, I'm talking when you're in bed at night and you look up and you say, Lord Jesus, I love you, I praise you, and all of a sudden you just feel like, oh my gosh, he's with me here. He's with me. I don't mean, you know, the body, his body's standing right there. I just mean you feel his presence through his Holy Spirit. That is awesome. But it says, Paul said in verse 23, For I have received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. This body, the cracker, it represents the body of Christ. Jesus, his body, it represents this. This is what Jesus told the disciples on the night before, just a few hours before he was going to be condemned, or betrayed rather, I should say. The body represents, the, or the cracker represents the body of Christ. That's heavy. In verse 25, in the same manner he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. So this is serious. This is really serious. It's not for the... The person that, oh, yeah, I'm a Christian, but, you know, you do your own thing. That's not going to work. That's called taking the cup and the, 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 the wine and the, and the bread. That's called taking that in an unworthy manner. See, God wants all of us, not part, not on Sunday and Wednesday night. He wants you Monday morning, Monday night. He wants you Thursday afternoon. He wants you Friday evening. He wants to love you and honor you. We need to get serious with God. Let's bow our heads and pray. If there be anybody in here that would say, Sam, I, I need to ask Jesus Christ to be my Savior. I've been here for quite a few years, but I've never asked Jesus to be my Savior. Would you raise your hand? No one looking around. This is, that's disrespectful. Don't look around. Okay, we have a couple hands. Praise the Lord. We have a few hands that are praying. People are raising their hands. Praise the Lord. Let's pray real quick, all of us together. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sin. Make me brand new. Cover me with your blood. Help me to walk after you, not away from you. 
Help me to walk towards the cross and not away from the cross. Help me to read your word. Help me to pray. Forgive me again, Lord. Write my name in your book. I love you. Praise the Lord. Keep your heads bowed. Praise the Lord. We got some new people here that have come to know Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Welcome. Welcome to the family of God. The Bible says in, in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, it says, If we believe in our heart and we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus, we will be saved. Verse, chapter, verse 13 says, We will be saved. When you call upon him and you believe in your heart that Jesus died on the cross and he rose again after his death, three days later, that's what it says. You are born again. That's what Jesus told Nicodemus in John chapter 3. So praise the Lord. Welcome. And it also says in John chapter 1 verse 12, it says, as many as he calls, as many as he calls, he's called you. All of us he's called. That means he calls you and he'll never turn you away. As many as he calls, he won't turn away. He loves you that much. Praise the Lord. Now there's, with everybody's head bowed, there's another set of people that are here that are playing games. We've all done that. All of us. You need to make peace with God. You need to make it right with God. You need to grab onto his grace and his love. I'm not talking again about a, 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 you fail. I'm talking about someone who's playing a game. If there be anybody in here that you would say, Sam, you know, I, I haven't been doing very good. I've been not, not living the way I should. Raise your hand, please. Okay, we've got a couple hands here that have prayed. Lord Jesus, you see the hearts here. You see each one of our hearts, and you see these hands that have honestly said, Lord, I, I haven't done well, and I'm sorry. Lord, reach down, cover them with your blood. Make them brand new, Lord. Let them know that your word in Romans 8, 1 says there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who walk according to the Spirit and not the flesh. Lord, you saw the, the hands that went up. Let them know, Lord, that you forgive them and you love them. And there's none like you. We worship and we adore you, Lord. Thank you for your kindness. Touch these hearts and let them know. If you came to know Jesus as your Savior tonight, come up afterwards. And so me and a couple other people that are going to be up here can pray for you. We'd love that. For those of you that are having a hard time, there's no condemnation. That's what the Bible says. We just read that in Romans 8. There's no condemnation. Come forward for prayer so we can encourage because we love you. And again, there's no condemnation. Jesus doesn't condemn you. No, do we. You are a wonderful God. Thank you for your great love. We're going to... Um, Pastor uh, <laughs> Deacon Geary is going to show us where we should go and to get the, the elements. So while we're doing that, we're going we're gonna to sing a song. So keep your heart in tune. Don't talk. This isn't the time to talk. Worship the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Holiness, holiness is what I long for. Holiness is what I need. Holiness, holiness is what you want from me. Try it again, holiness. Holiness, holiness is what I long for. Holiness is what I need. Holiness, holiness. 
holiness is what you want from me. Take my heart. Take my heart and form it. And form it. Take my mind. Take my mind. Transform it. Transform it. Take my will. Take my will. Conform it. Conform it. To yours. To yours. Faithfulness. Faithfulness. Faithfulness is what I long for. Faithfulness is what I need. Faithfulness. Faithfulness is what you want from me. Let me make it a prayer. Make it your prayer. Take my heart. Take my heart. And form it. And form it. Take my mind. Take my mind. Transform it. Transform it. Take my will. Take my will. Conform it, conform it to yours, to yours, oh Lord. Let me hear you guys. Take my heart. Take my heart and form it. And form it. Take my mind. Take my mind. Transform it. Transform it. Take my will. Take my will, conform it, conform it to yours, to yours, oh Lord. One more time. Take my heart. Take my heart and form it. Take my mind. Take my mind. Transform it. Transform it. Take my will. Take my will. Conform it. Conform it. To yours. To yours. Oh Lord. Holiness. Holiness. Holiness is what I long for. Holiness is what I need. Holiness is what I need. Holiness. 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 Holiness is what you want from me. And Lord, as we come before you, all of us in here can come clean because we repented of our sins and came to know you, or we also repented of our sins and we got back on the right track. You are faithful and you are just and you are magnificent. There is none like you, Lord God Almighty. So as we, we take this bread which represents your precious broken body that was broken for our healing. We thank you and we praise you, Lord God Almighty. Thank you for your broken body in the name of Jesus. You may partake. And Lord, your precious blood that was spilled on the cross of Calvary, you were beaten beyond recognition. Your beard was tore off your face. A crown of thorns was dug into your precious head. 
you took 39 stripes for me because I'm too much of a coward to be able to do this. You did it for me willingly. You did it for all of us willingly because all of us are too much of a coward to do this. But you are magnificent and you are precious and we love you, Father. Thank you for that broken body that shed forth your precious blood that your word says in Hebrews that without the shedding of blood there's no forgiveness of sin and you did this freely because you love us that much there's none like you thank you for your your blood that spilled cover each one of our hearts with this blood that we Lord will continue daily walking with you fully because like I, like I prayed earlier, our very best is the least that you're due. You are magnificent. We praise you, Savior. Thank you for your, your spilled blood for all of us. We love you. In Jesus' name, you may partake of the cup. Oh, man. Pretty good, huh? God is good. Amen. Amen. You know, we fail and we fall. All of us do. But it's remembering that when we fall down, we stand up and we let the Lord do that work in our hearts because of his power and his might. The power that raised him from the dead allows us to live like we should and helps us when we fall so hard. There's no condemnation to God. Those of you that accepted Jesus as your Savior, please come up and so we can pray with you and kind of help you along. For those of you that, if, that needed prayer for maybe a life that you've been having a hard time and what not doing like you should, come up forward, please. Prayer. There's no condemnation again. There's no condemnation. We're going to do one more song. Why don't we all stand?
guys god bless you don't forget about the food in the back that's for anyone who needs it so god bless you have a great dime don't forget about prayer down here okay hi everybody pastor greg calvary chapel harupa valley hey we're so glad that you've been enjoying the videos and we just know that god has been touching you and just giving you a blessing through these teachings but you know we'd like to give you a challenge since this material is available as you know you can go to the website and pull these videos down but we would like to challenge you since you're enjoying these teachings on a regular basis we want to challenge you why not share these videos you've got lots of friends on Facebook and so forth and social media why not inject the gospel message the Bible teachings of, of the Lord into, into your share partners. It would be a great opportunity to maybe start a conversation, but we would really like you to be encouraged and consider passing these teachings on. We want people to be benefited, so let's allow the Lord to do what he would like to do. But in the meantime, we're so glad that you've been join, joining us and enjoying these teachings. They will continue to come as the Lord tarries, but again, enjoy, enjoy the Lord, Thank you so much and continue to pray for Calvary Chapel here in the city of Harupa Valley. God bless you, Pastor Greg, once again, and we'll catch up with you next time. Have a great week in the Lord. Bye now.